Hello and welcome to this review of the Epson Business Full Keyboard, a very interesting and very large Topra keyboard whose name evocatively abbreviates to BFK. Yeah, exactly, all Doom players know precisely what I'm on about here. <laughs> So let's kick off with the size for starters. It's massive. It's the same width as an IBM Model M, and that's saying something. I mean, the 10 keyless version of the Model M is still 40 centimeters wide, and that's nearly as big as a modern full-size keyboard. However, because it uses a lot of extra key rows and has a large rear bezel, which doubles as a kind of wrist rest, it's much deeper than a Model M, and although I'm known as someone who likes their keyboards big, this one is on the stretchy side even for me, particularly because of the huge depth. So it's big, damn big, but how well built is it? Well, in a word, very. The thing weighs over fucking two kilos, not exactly light for what is essentially a rubber dome keyboard, and it's very well held together, which is impressive considering it's also a modular keyboard. Honestly, I have no fear that this thing is going to fall apart or that it will split down the middle here or something because the two modules are held together by these two metal bars which are firmly bolted in place with brass screw sockets. The two parts communicate to each other using this little cable here with its own cable gutter, but there is also a socket for plugging it in on the other side. So yeah, that's right, you can put this numpad thing on the left rather than on the right side so that you have more space to the right of your keyboard for your mouse. Or you can just have the numpad module completely separate. It works over PS2, so it's very easy to adapt. In fact, the owner of this keyboard, yes, don't worry, it's just on loan to me, said he frequently uses the numpad of this keyboard together with the HHKB as a daily driver. He actually got the keyboard because of me. As soon as I told him about it, he wanted one, and he did a damn fine job of it because this one's in fucking mint condition. As I mentioned before, it works over PS2, and it even has a mouse pass-through so that you can plug your mouse into the keyboard and then the keyboard into the mouse port so you can use both at the same time. Of course, Topra market a few very well-known keyboards, such as the HHKB and the Real4 series, but the BFK is the one no one really knows about, presumably because it was made by Topra for Epson specifically rather than for the mass market, because one, it bears the Epson logo on it, and two, only Epson are rich enough to be able to afford them. Yes, Topra of course make ludicrously expensive stuff, I mean this real force is almost $250, but the BFK's price tag matches its name. Just have a guess, how much is this one? No, it started at $650, and counting 13 years of inflation, it's actually about $850. Jesus Mary and Joseph above, that's a fucking what a do that is. They occasionally turn up, but even second-hand, they tend to be as expensive as shit. Shame, though, they're really interesting and well-made boards. The layout is based on the JIS layout, which is the normal layout in Japan, but even then it's non-standard, and although it's not the weirdest I've ever seen, by a mile, it's not as easy to get into as I thought it would be. I still struggle with it, and I've been testing this for a considerable amount of time now. One of the big giveaways of the JIS layout, other than the Japanese characters all over the keycaps of course, is the spacebar, which is split into four different keys, including three modifier keys which I think make you access different sets of characters from the Japanese language. For Western input languages, these keys don't do anything at all, but unfortunately you end up with a tiny spacebar of just three units wide, and extra keys make it really easy to confuse which are the normal modifier keys and which aren't. This key, for example, I keep trying to hit both when I want to use the spacebar as well as the alt key, but it doesn't do either, and to a lesser degree, the same problem goes for this key as well. Apart from the three extra keys around the spacebar, the JIS layout also has an ISO-style enter key, as well as a tiny backspace key, more frequently associated with a big-ass enter, as well as a split right shift, so the JIS layout normally uses as many as 109 keys, including Windows keys. Thankfully, they did widen the keys on the right side by half a unit or so, because that way the backspace key is somewhat okay-sized, but those one-unit backspace keys always drive me up the wall. 
The split right shift also really throws me off because unlike other split shifts I'm used to, such as on the focus layout, the extra key is put on the right of the shift, but here it's put on the left, and as a result I mentally confuse the positions of all these keys here. It's surprisingly astounding. The same story goes for the extra key next to the backspace, which screws up the positions of the plus and minus keys for me, more so because those keys are not marked with those symbols, and the bracket keys are marked as 8 and 9, rather than 9 and 0, which are the actual keys that output those symbols. So overall the layout might look somewhat familiar at a glance, but I found it a lot harder to adjust to than I thought, it definitely takes some practice. The BFK takes the JIS layout to a slightly weirder height though because the numpad module, which is called the Business 10 keyboard by the way, uses a rather outrageous layout of its own. The nav cluster is crammed into a two unit wide column which leads to page up and page down getting stuck onto the numpad and the arrow keys getting crammed into this weird diamond shape which is again not exactly easy to get used to, especially when playing games, and the numpad itself is also rather strange. This whole numpad module is actually the most awesome thing about the keyboard though, I'd say, and I can completely understand why people would want to use even just this thing. It contains a separate set of F keys, which is somewhat redundant if you also have the main keyboard unit, but if you use it with a HHKB, you suddenly have the F keys again, as well as an escape button. Similarly, unlike a 10 keyless plus numpad, this is more of a 60%, plus nav and numpad thing, so if you take this thing off, the main keyboard is more like an expanded 60% than a TKL, saving even more space, and similarly the add-on works exceptionally well with other 60% keyboards too. It also has Alt, Shift and Control hold keys here, with built-in lock LEDs, which work a bit like sticky keys except you don't need the annoying toggle function in Windows and the numpad itself is expanded massively as well. Now some of the keys, like this triple zero key, which does indeed output three zeros, is a bit useless for me, but the rest, holy shit, can I have this with every keyboard please? It's got a full stop and a comma key, which is fucking awesome, a tab forward and a back tab key, which on this computer just outputs shift plus tab by the way, and even a backspace key on it. The page up and page down keys are on the nam pan as well, and they move the num lock all the way to the top, but with a nav and a num pad, a num lock key is useless anyway, so that's actually a good decision because you get one more key over here. And it's still got the enter key in the traditional place, which is great because I use that key a lot lot. I mean, I would have probably slightly rearranged the button placement on this, but all in all, this numpad is massively more useful to me than a normal one. I use the numpad very frequently, and I've always hated not having a comma, tab and backspace key on it, so I really love this feature. I still think it would have been better if they had taken three columns for the nav cluster to get the more traditional layout, but honestly, I completely get the product design behind this model. It's great. All of these extra keys do increase the already high 109 key count of the JIS layout to 130 though. Impressive. The keycaps are typically of Topra, they're of intermediate thickness, but they're die sublimed PBT keycaps which never yellow. Apart from Unicomp, the company that still makes the IBM Model M, and Topra, there's only a few companies that still offer die sub PBT caps with their keyboards. The mount is Topra's own and it's basically incompatible with anything else. Topra did make a bunch of MX mount boards for Cooler Master's Nova Touch line, but other than that it's a pretty unique mount. Now I showed a brother Prototopra keyboard not too long ago in a teardown video which used triple shot keycaps that people commented were Topra compatible. And just to clarify, that's correct, they do actually fit on the switches like this. The switches, as I'm sure you've worked out by now, are Topra switches, and although I couldn't find any information on the weighting of the switches in this keyboard anywhere, comparison to my real fours leads me to believe they're the 45 gram variant. Now this is a rather middle of the road weighting, it is definitely a lot better than the 35 gram switches, which are almost linear, and which are very easy to actuate accidentally with just the weight of your finger, but I prefer the 55 gram version myself, as it's more tactile. 
Once or twice I did also actuate these switches with just the weight of my fingers, but that was quite rare to be honest. Topra switches are an immensely polarizing switch, mainly because they're rubber domes at heart and extremely expensive, but many people really like the gradualness of the tactile feel they offer and the unique switch sound. To me, the main advantage of these switches over other rubber dome is the capacitive nature of them, which means that unlike other rubber dome switches, they actuate partway through, which leads to the more relaxed and less tiring typing we associate with mechanicals. Of course, it also doesn't hurt that it comes with inherent N-key rollover, good for gaming especially. Although most people tend to either hate or religiously worship Topra, I find myself somewhere in the middle. I like them a fair bit, but I don't idolize these. It's clearly a refined board, but the key feels still unmistakably rubber dome-like, more so than the better dome with slider keyboards out there. Above all though, uh, the one thing I just can't justify to myself is the exorbitantly high cost of Topra boards, which are expensive even by the standards of other mechanical keyboards, and this one being expensive even by Topra standards means it's literally on a whole different level. I mean, my entire computer, which is a nice gaming rig, didn't cost that much more than this keyboard would have cost me. So, what do I think of it in the end? Well, overall, I think it's fucking awesome. Whether you like Topra switches or not is a matter of opinion, but I think most people can at least agree on that this thing has character. The numpad thing is super useful on its own, especially in combination with the 60% keyboards, but let's be honest, when combined with its native mainboards, the whole business full keyboard is a lot more charismatic and cool looking. Yes, the layout takes quite a bit of getting used to, but overall, I'd say this thing is pretty legit. Compared to this thing, a real force looks positively boring. The price is completely ridiculous and I don't think anyone who isn't a company would be insane enough to buy this at full price. I mean, Jesus Christ, on a fucking bar stool, $850. But as a second hander, you end up with a hopefully much more affordable and cool keyboard. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.